as this transition happens and the market has yet to re recognize this, we're not getting the valuation that, you know, a successful Copper Explore Co is getting. Um, we're trading at, you know, uh, 10 or you know, point, point 0.1 or point 0.2 times our NAV relative to a lot of other uh, copper exploration companies, which are much, much higher than that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2021 Vancouver Resource Investment Conference. My name is Jamie Keach. I'm from Resource Insider, and I'm here today to interview Chris Bunsick the president, CEO, and director of Ascendant Resources, a company exploring in Portugal. So we got a lot to talk about. We're going to get into this company. We're going to get into the details. We're going to get into Chris, and we're going to learn why investors should care about Ascendant. So Chris, thank you very much for taking some time to sit down today. Thanks, Jeremy. So for people who have never heard of Ascendant Resources, who are you? What do you guys do? Sure. So Ascendant Resources, we're a TSX listed exploration company based here in Toronto and in Portugal. Our ticker is ASND. Um, and we are focused on exploring in the Iberian Pirate Belt. We have a great project called Lagoa Salgada, which uh, we earned it, we acquired a piece of and earning into an option for 80% of the project. Um, it's right on the Iberian Pirate Belt next to large world class mines like Nevis Corvo, uh, Algestral, Aguas Tinidas. This is the world's largest belt for VMS type deposits. Um, the next doesn't even compare, it's about a third of the size. And so we are right in the, a great neighborhood. Um, we already have a resource that we've established over the past two years. Um, we've got a 20 million ton resource. Uh, we put a PEA out on a, a portion of that last year uh, with, with great success. Uh, we're, we're demonstrated at least a standalone um, small operation is warranted um, from an economic perspective. But we are growing this resource and think that, you know, down the line, we've got something that could be three or four times the size uh, that it is right now. And so we're very excited to be to be working in Portugal. Um, we have a small team of, of very experienced uh, Iberian pyrite uh, geologists there and um, exactly that we're, we're keen to keep going. Uh, we have had some very successful drill results um, out just this past Wednesday, um, you know, demonstrating some great grades. We're focused on copper. And so it's a polymetallic belt. Uh, however, we are seeing some great copper in the Southern part of the uh, ore body. And so we're following up on that, um, trying to grow that substantially. And, and so far our thesis is planning it. Okay. Um, so let's dig in a little bit to something you mentioned. So you're in the Iberian Pyrite Belt. You said there were you know, several operations around you guys in that jurisdiction. So this isn't a part of the world that I'm particularly familiar with uh, as an exploration destination. I think maybe some of our viewers are in the same boat. Can you give us a little bit more background on the mining history there? And some of you mentioned some of the mines, but who are who are the companies that are actually working there? And sure. So Lundin owns Nevis Corvo, uh, and that's about eighty kilometers away from our location. Um, Al Jastrell is about forty kilometers away from us, and that's owned by a private company. But uh, you know, in a past life, it was also owned by Lundin. Aguas Tenidas is in Spain, and um, that's a, they've got three mines. They're owned by Trafigura and the uh, UAE Sovereign Wealth Fund, Mubdala. Um, but going back, you know, a couple of centuries, a um, couple of millennia, uh, the original Rio Tinto mine is located on the belt. And so there's been mining on this belt since Roman times. Um, hmm. The original Rio Tinto mine gave, you know, name to, to the, the massive mining company now. Um, and so, you know, we've got Las Cruces, which is, uh, which is a first quantum mine, which is on the belt. So there are a lot of large players, Grupo Mexico, for example, um, several ports, uh, are shipping out of there, both in Spain and Portugal, um, uh, both concentrate and, and, uh, you know, metal that's been produced. That's, that's, um, headed offshore to other destinations, uh, you know, from the Fraser Institute's perspective. Uh, it ranks very highly. It's it's fifth on our list of countries to to want to do business. Um, so there's a, a rich history of mining in Portugal uh, on the Iberian Pirate Belt, um, but it's also a great place to be doing business currently, um, especially you know as other jurisdictions are are running into problems. I think Europe is some is a place that's actually garnering a lot of positive attention. Yeah, well, let's talk about that because you know something I'm always cognizant of is, you know, mining companies in the EU, potential permitting challenges. Is this a problem that you guys are going to have in terms of getting 
I guess, obviously mining permits, but also sort of maybe the lesser commonly known permits, like the water licenses and discharge permits and, you know, uh, and the various um, processing related permits you might need depending on, on which, which method you intend on using. Right. Has this been something that's been a roadblock for you guys or, or has it gone rather smoothly? Not at all. In fact, we, 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 when we acquired the project, it already had uh, an exploration license. Um, we have since transitioned that to an exploitation license. So the next steps in the development are producing an environmental impact assessment uh, which is going to start this year. And that should take about 12 to 18 months doing environmental baseline studies and that sort of thing. Um, and that transitions us from that exploitation license to a mining license. But there are very clear steps um, that you know are required from get, get us to from A to B. Now, I should tell you that in the project, one of the partners is the EDM, which is the uh, Portuguese Mining Authority. And they have a 10% interest in the project. Now, working with them to advance... Um, the project would be very helpful in the sense that they can help us navigate some of these roadblocks if they arise. However, I got to say, everything's gone very smoothly and it sounds like it, it should continue to do so. I know that the mayor is very, very much on board with additional mining projects um, in location. He is looking for job creation. I know that the country is looking for additional mining projects uh, to get up and running because there are several, but they, they don't have you know nearly what they should in terms of the country's capacity, the infrastructure's capacity. Yeah. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, positive tailwinds in, uh, in country to, to advance projects like ours. And we have the largest um, development project in country next to the operating lines that are already there. And, you know, let's talk for a second about how you ended up getting involved with uh, Ascendant. Were you one of the founders of the company? Did you come in later to, to help run the operation? How did this all come into being? Yeah, so Ascendant uh, and its prior uh, companies, uh, I mean, prior names have been around for, um, you know, about 10 years now. I joined the company uh, about seven years as we were looking for new assets to put into what became Ascendant. And uh, it was effectively a shell company. And what we found was through the process with Nearstar, they were divesting of 10 mines. We took a look at uh, three of the mines that were still in operation, you know, at, the, at that time. And at the end of 2016, closed on the acquisition of El Machido. And so El Machido is a producing lead, zinc, silver mine in Honduras. Um, we acquired it for a very small amount of money um, with an offtake for that, that Nearstar uh, uh, held, held on to. Um, and we turned that mine around. So we took it from 1,200 tons a day up to 2,400 tons a day of production, run a mine. We got the, the head grade up from 5% zinc equivalent up to nearly 8% zinc equivalent when we, when we uh, uh, sold the mine, in fact, um, at the end of 2019. That was our last full uh, quarter of production. And so that was done by a number of operational methods, you know, mine planning, cutting down on dilution, uh, training. We got our costs down from $1.80 a pound to $1.05 a pound. Now, unfortunately, um, El Machido will remain a, a, high co a higher cost mine. We did, once we kind of plucked all that low hanging fruit, we did look at how to, um, what the next steps were. And so we identified some larger projects that required capital. Um, it was the wrong market. Uh, to be looking mm -hmm. for $35 million uh, for that. We did go down a number of different paths. Um, and ultimately, just this past April, um, we closed on a sale of the, of the mine um, after not having been able to find that capital. Now, in the wings, we had this project at Lagos Lagada. And so we did not want to dilute um, our share base um, to, to, you know, maintain El Machido, a money losing operation at the expense of our, you know, per share ownership of Lago Salgada, which is a fantastic project. Um, and so we shifted gears from producer to exploration company with Lago Salgada because of what we saw on the ground. We, the, the, it had always been in weak hands. They hadn't spent a lot of money on it because it's, it's not, it doesn't outcrop. It's, uh, it's under about hundred meters of tertiary cover. And so our geologists saw this. Uh, we looked at it um, pretty closely and decided, like, this is a diamond in the rough, and we need to have this and, and develop it. Uh, and so far, you know, the last two years, we've taken it from an eight million ton deposit up to twenty three million tons. We've, you know, increased that grade by by uh, about twenty percent as well. And what grades are you consistently getting these days? 
Uh, well, so so the exploration that we're doing right now is in the south zone of this deposit, yeah. um, and so you know some of the results for that we that we put out last um, last Wednesday uh, included you know twenty five meters of two two and a quarter percent copper equivalent, um, and it's a polymetallic deposit. Um, we had some bonanza grade um, copper hits, uh, you know one meter at fourteen uh, percent copper equivalent, uh, one and a half meters at. Ten uh, percent copper equivalent. So some some great demonstrations there, and the, we are also having results. You know, great across mineable widths of two plus percent copper, three plus percent copper equivalent. Um, that we're going to follow up on. But as we these are on fifty meter step out holes, and so as we expand on this resource with fifty meter step outs, when we go to do our uh, resource update. Our, our, you know, our, our new 43101 uh, resource estimate, um, we're very encouraged by, you know, the size of the step outs, the intercepts that we're seeing and the grade that we're seeing so that, you know, I think we'll have some positive news come out when, you know, when we go to do that estimate. Um, and, the- sorry, yeah. Do you have a timeline or an estimate of when that estimate will be coming out? You know, I, 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 you know, I think it's a good policy to, as long as you're drilling and finding more, you know, high grade mineralization, just keep drilling. Yeah. So. I think we're going to we're following up on this you know most recent set of holes with a, con- a continuation of this exploration program in the south. Um, we've finished three holes. We're on to the next four to round out seven. Um, again, these are large step outs, and we're really growing the size of the sore body. Uh, I think the south really has the potential to be much larger than the north um, that we've outlined so far in our, our resource. All right. So let's talk for a second about what kind of financial position you guys are in right now. You have a 20 cent share price, but just under a $20 million market cap. Do you have cash? Uh, you know, what, what position are you in right now? Yeah, we've got cash. Um, I mean, we we have a we've got very favorable terms with our drilling partner. Um, we've got uh, enough cash to keep us going for the next you know twelve months if we choose to. Um, I think as an exploration company, we always want to uh, make sure we're uh, not going so fast that we're burning through everything, but at the same time advancing the project. And I'm I'm excited about this. I think this is a great project. Um, so we're we're making sure that we're you know being good stewards of our capital. Um, investing it wisely and and ultimately you know we'll be raising more money down the road to continue the development but we're not under any pressure okay so for you know current investors and ascendant for people that are watching this you know why is now a a good time to invest in ascendant or is it a good time to invest in Ascendant? what do you guys have coming up over the next year that would get shareholders excited I, for, firstly, the expansion of the South Zone. So the you know the, the the continuation of the exploration program there is you know under my expectations is going to continue to be very strong. And so um, we we've demonstrated that it's there. We're expanding on it. We're we're you know we're on trend. It's open in all directions. It's open at depth, and we're still very shallow. Um, and we're having great success with the drill bit. Um, that's one angle. Now, the second angle is is a little more structural in the sense that we just came from being a producing company uh, to transitioning into a, a, an exploration company. We were zinc and we're now more focused on copper. And so I would say that as this transition happens and the market has yet to re- recognize this, we're not getting the valuation that you know a successful copper explorer co is getting. Um, we're trading at you know uh, ten or tw- you know point point one or point two times our nav relative to a lot of other uh, copper exploration companies, which are much much higher than that. And so I think as that transition happens and and we are able to get the story out there more, there will be this natural um, revaluation that happens. Yeah. Regardless of the continued drill results, which again I expect to be good, the drills aren't turning right now, but we're very optimistic about that. So how are you guys um, yeah, going about achieving this free writing, I guess? Is it, is it a matter primarily of just getting the story out there, having conversations with, with people like me and doing things like this and telling the story better after the sort of the change of business or? Absolutely. Or, no, that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We're out there. We're, we're, we're being very vocal with, uh, uh, with the investment community and, um, and trying to get the word out. Now, I think that commodity prices have really turned. I think that juniors are starting to get recognition uh, and, and it's, you know, 
investors are coming down cap towards uh, companies of our size and, and our activities. And, and so I think that we're, we should be able to ride that wave um, with everyone else. And I, I, it's very well justified. So you're based in Toronto. Do I have that right? That's right. Yeah. So, you know, what kind of team have you managed to build in Portugal? It's not a, it's not a part of the world, uh, again, from a mining perspective that I know a ton about. Do you, are there good, high quality Portuguese and Spanish geologists in the region that you're leveraging? Or are you bringing people in from other parts of Europe? How does, how does that work? Absolutely. Our, our team in Portugal are entirely Portuguese. And there are, um, there are mining colleges there. There's um, a lot of expertise locally from the mining operations, both in Portugal and in Spain. Um, there are European labs that we're dealing with that are doing, you know, uh, geological tests with forest, metallurgical testing, um, as well as our, our, our sampling, of course. Um, the expertise is there and it's, it's not hard to find. I mean, I think that um, Portugal, uh, you know, from a legacy perspective, was one of the um, less wealthy EU countries. And so... Uh, when I'm budgeting, it's it's not um, it's not overly onerous. I'll just say, um, and so you know, again, it's it's a great place to do business. There's definitely talents, um, and and they're they're doing a great job. Now we have our JV company, uh, which employs, um, and it, depending on where we are in our exploration cycle, any, anywhere between you know one and two people up to five or six people. But it's not a, it's not a, a challenge. And has, uh, you know, the challenges associated with COVID-19, particularly in Europe, has that slowed down the exploration process? Has this been something you guys have been able to manage uh, effectively? No, it's definitely manageable. Um, everything is happening outside and everyone's following all the proper COVID procedures, um, both within our operation and at the drill site, so at our core shack. Um, and so we've been able to manage it. Uh, Portugal has, um, you know, earlier... Uh, in in the COVID process was a little less impacted um, as as other countries had been. Um, certainly, we're seeing you know what's going on with the UK, etc. Um, mm. You know, it's, you know, I think I would say that Lisbon experienced the, the the most problems with respect to COVID, but we are about an hour and a half south of Lisbon, uh, near a, t- a town called Grandola, uh, which is not not terribly large, and um, it's been. Relatively, relatively uneventful um, for us, despite all the precautions. Yeah. Okay. So there's a lot of investors that are going to be watching this video. There's a lot of investors watching this conference in general. Um, and there will be other copper companies presenting. I guess, you know, my question for you is if someone's looking for copper exposure, why Ascendant? Why Ascendant over the sort of plethora of other choices around the world? Right. Well, I think you need to look at the uh, a few things. Uh, firstly, we've got a management team that has operated, finance built, you know, um, run the gamut through the whole mining cycle. We've got a very strong team, um, and that, so if you're looking for, uh, you're going to look at it top down. Now, with respect to our project, again, the location is incredible. We are an hour and a half south of Lisbon. We are right next to high power, um, excuse me, high voltage power lines. Um, there's great infrastructure in the country. Um, we're, we're a truck drive away from the port. It's, it's not, um, not a challenge in that regard. Being in Portugal is great as well. Um, and then with respect to the actual resource, this is a, this has a potential to be another Nevis Corvo. Nevis Corvo, you know, 80, 90 million tons of resource, uh, with enough exploration we can get, I believe we can get there. And so, um, it's early days for us. We've had great success so far, as you can see in our, our, you know, meters drilled. Uh, to, to resource ratio. Um, we're at double or triple what um, they're seeing at Nevis Corval and Algestra, excuse me, uh, Agostinidis, because those are more mature operations. We are, you know, just at the beginning. We're, we're shallow. It hasn't, built, uh, hasn't been drilled to depth. And typically you see these VMS deposits uh, stacked on top of one another. We're only in the, in the first. Um, so it's a very exciting, it's a very exciting project and it's early days. We're way undervalued for the reasons I mentioned earlier. Uh, and, and so, you know, now is the right time for Ascendant, um, maybe more so than some of the other copper companies that already have a lot of the success priced in. So for people who don't know anything about copper, who, who, who know they want exposure to the metal, but don't really understand that the exploration uh, metrics, I suppose, what would be considered a success for your exploration program over the coming year? You know, how many tons are you looking to have there? What kind of grades are you looking to have? I mean, understanding that this is this is speculative. These are goals. These are not predictions. Right. Well, you know, let's look at 
the so when we're when we think about this, we're thinking about an underground deposit. So we're going to use a cutoff that's somewhere between 0.6 and 0.8 percent copper uh, or copper equivalent. And so um, anything above that is you know subject to all the engineering studies and everything that happens. Um, likely to be economic. And so, I'll, you know, big caveat there. But uh, so any grade that we get that's more than 0.8% is likely going to make money. I mean, that that's yet to be proven through a full feasibility. Um, but when we're getting grades like two and a half and 3%, those are those are great copper grades. Um, mm. you look at some of the large open pit mines, Escondida at 0.4%, um, like uh, some of these very large open pit uh, copper mines in the world, um, they do it on a tonnage basis. Here, we're doing it on a grade basis. And again, anything over 0.8 makes money. Like I said, um, you know, I think that if we're pulling out 2 and 3% copper, people should be very excited about that. That's, that's very comparable to what the other mines in the belt are pulling out, uh, if not better. Um, Agostinidis um, is pulling about uh, 4% copper, and they've got a copper stringer network um, underground that we believe our resource looks like as well. Um, in their Magdalena mine, they have a, similarly have a small BMS type deposit sitting over top of, of a copper stockwork. And we've got our north zone, which is a BMS deposit. Uh, we believe all three of these, these zones connect um, and through a copper stockwork system. And so based on the grades that we're seeing so far, we, we think we can dramatically increase the size of this. And these zones are the north zone, the south zone, and what's the third one? Uh, we're calling it a central zone, but but ultimately, I think it's going to be shown that they connect. And so that's the grade. What about scale? You know, what size do, does this need to be to be considered economic, to be worth building? I mean, is it 20 million tons? Is it 80 million tons? Where where do we need to get it to? Yeah, I, I think you want to have some an operation that's producing... Uh, 40, sorry, four to 6,000 tons per day. So you're looking at about 1.4 to 2 million tons per year. Uh, so say it's 2 million tons per year. Um, you want a 10 year mine life, you're looking at, you know, 20 million tons plus um, as the, not as your resource, but as your, your mine life at 2 million tons a year. And that's a deep, that's a really good size mine. That's a very good size mine. And, um, you know, so if you think you've got 50, 60, 70 million tons of total resource, uh, you're well on your way. Um, you're, you're set up because you, you'll just drill that off and, and bring it, bring up the category, bring it into your reserves, uh, and you'll be able to feed that for much more than 10 years. All right. Well, Chris, thank you very much for taking the time today. Is there anything that I didn't ask that uh, viewers should hear about or should know about Ascendant? Yeah, well, I, I, I guess it's so it's a polymetallic deposit, and I just want to highlight the fact that. We, we're, we're pulling these great copper grades uh, most recently, but but in our PEA, which we put out in January, it was on the north zone. Um, again, that project itself was a 2,700 ton a day operation um, for a nine-year mine life, an NPV of, uh, of 106 million US at a cost of 66 cents per pound zinc. So it's it's a high margin project, and if zinc's at a buck twenty uh, a buck twenty five right now, you're looking at a 50 percent gross margin, which is great. In that model, 44% of our revenues come from precious metals. So we've got very good gold and very good silver, as well as uh, lead, zinc, copper, and tin, which all pay. And so we, we produce six metals um, into concentrate that, that would come out of the North Zone. Again, that's our kind of starter, our, our starter project, but we will likely see a much bigger resource in the South that's got a bigger focus on copper. We'll be looking at, you know, producing more concentrates, likely a copper concentrate as well, um, as time progresses. And so I, I would just highlight, we've already got a very solid project on our hands from a, you know, a mine we could build. Um, we'd, we would have to take that through the feasibility. We've got this great precious metals component, um, but it's only getting better from here. All right. Well, Chris, thank you very much for taking the time. And for everyone at home, this is the CEO of Ascendant Resources. And you can find out more at ascendantresources.com. And I am Jamie Keach from Resource Insider. And you can learn more about what we do at resource-insider.com. Chris, thank you very much for taking the time today. All right. Thanks a lot, Jamie. Appreciate it.